establishment of, uh, of the first doll. I wonder, will we celebrate the centenary of the establishment of the Revenue Commissioners on the 21st of February, 1993? <laughs> when we became finally financially responsible for ourselves. Independence is in many ways the easy part. Becoming responsible is much harder. understood as language. 
main consequence, again, for Austria-Hungary, this is the case that I know. Uh, this is Austria-Hungary before and after the Treaty of Versailles. <coughs> big chunk goes to Poland, big chunk goes to Slovakia, Romania, uh, uh, Yugoslavia gets some part, and Italy. It basically disappears as an empire, and we have two small countries replacing that empire. To see how it works, obviously it was determined by who spoke what language in a given territory. Although some of them, as you can see, like Voivodina, I, I don't know if I can actually this one, the distribution is actually quite equal between Hungarians and Serbs. Serbia kind, because there were slightly more Serbs than uh, Hungarians. So it is, at the end of the day, whoever spoke whatever language became independent or attached to a country that was speaking the same language. Now, going to the issue with self-determination that I have. First, this national consciousness, at least is a fluid concept, some may say constructed. I think I'm smarter than actually engaging in that debate here. So I'm not going to touch upon that. But from a purely prophetic standpoint, the biggest issue is that it does not qualify the unit of analysis. What size is the territory that we're talking about to ask for this uh, independent movement? It's not mentioned in the theory, and actually it's impossible to determine. I have a slide next to actually show you uh, what I mean. It leaves room for interpretation, he left room for interpretation at Versailles, and because of that, it was from the get-go used politically. And what I mean by that, I'm from Romania, I have to tell my allegiances, so that, uh, because it's very controversial, obviously. Uh, but I am Romanian, so I and my family and I benefited tremendously from uh, the Treaty of Versailles, right? It's, it's really good to be part of the majority. But, what I mean by the unit of analysis, so this is Transylvania, right? The, the part in blue, where a majority of people in 1918 spoke Romania. Eight cents, uh, hence, it was given to Romania, to what at the time was the kingdom of Romania, significantly smaller. But within this region, there's another territory of three counties that are heavily Hungarian, roughly 80% of the population. Who decides that this is the unit of analysis and not this one? Within those, there's maybe a village or a city where Romanian is spoken, 90%. Who actually decides that those guys don't ask for independence? And that was left in the air because it's impossible actually to determine at Versailles. So, how was the issue solved? As I said, as I gave you, what determines the shape of the Union is actually politics at Versailles. And put simply, the countries that lost the war lost it. It was that simple. It was politics and international relations. Uh, now, more recent examples that actually, I think, really speak to this role of politics and international relations. Kosovo and Catalonia. Kosovo is an independent country, recognized by most EU members, with the exception of Kosovo, Spain, Romania, Greece, I wonder why. Surprise, surprise. But it made it. It left a country that not only that is not a EU member, it's actually struggling to become a EU member. Therefore, they had very little leverage. <coughs> Catalonia is a very different issue. And again, it's, it is a not a normative talk. I stay away from those in general. This is very pragmatic. It's trying, as some of my predecessors said, trying to leave a country that is a EU member. Uh, EU members do not, um, do not make any judgments about territorial integrity of another EU member. And they're not going to do it. And to show, so this is probably.